All right, well, welcome to the Ask a Pastor podcast. Uh, we're going to jump in on uh, something that's pressing uh, in the news right now. And if you have questions, as always, send them to askapastor at orchardhillchurch.com. Um, Kurt and uh, Terry, we're going to address the issue of the coronavirus because that's uh, hot on people's minds right now. Mm -hmm. And the question overall uh, is... How, how should Christians, uh, let's start with this question. How should Christians respond? Should I say this with my mask on or no? I, apparently masks don't help. Is that right? That's right. This filters asbestos. Yeah. But, but not it, corona? It has nothing to do with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, um, what, what's a Christian response to something that is, uh, that's in the media and that's a little bit scary? Well, you know, there's a couple of ways to look at that. One is uh, Christian response isn't probably any different than a human response initially, meaning what's uniquely Christian about there's a virus spreading and and what do you do? Yeah. I think there's a Christian responsibility to care for people when there's maybe a health crisis. Like you yeah. look back in the Middle Ages and sometimes when Christians really stepped in and, and yeah. served their community in a down and out time. Uh, right now, we don't know where this is going, so so it's a little early to be like, Christians are going to do this or that. I, I mean, you know, a few weeks from now, it might be that it's peaked and it's going down, or it might be growing. We don't know the, the answer to that. And certainly, there's a, there's a lot of um, reaction, and, and I think it's wise to try to understand where something's going and do the best you can to prepare yourself, but I don't know that there's a a biblical mandate yeah. anywhere around this other than to say, you know, wash your hands, but that's not really that's biblical. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Eating with unwashed hands, right? Th that's right. Um, I'm reminded of uh, a moment where Jesus put his hands on a man who had leprosy, you know, a highly contagious, deadly disease. And uh, now Jesus had a bit of an advantage there where he, I think he was, uh, the context was he was healing the man and, uh, and Jesus knew that he wasn't going to, die from leprosy. Um, but there's that model of, yeah, Christians stepping in and being the ones that care for people and not, and are not primarily, uh, thinking about myself. Yeah. I, uh, you'd have to say that, um, there's, there are a lot of people who, if, if they get sick with whatever they get sick with, uh, have a hard, are going to have a hard time taking care of themselves. Yeah. And so you want to have an ethic that says, we're going to care for people who are ill, you know. And what that means is that if you do it, you're maybe putting yourself at risk. Uh, that kind of self-sacrificial action, I think uh, Christians can confirm. They can say, yeah, that seems to be the way God would want us to act, you know, that we, we love people even, you know, no greater love has this than a person lay down his life for his friend, yeah. you know. So you can... You can say, uh, and, and if you can lay it down for a stranger, even better, you know. Uh, so I think there is a sense in which you can, the care for people may put you at risk, but you've got to be willing to take that risk at a certain point. Um, and I think a lot, and a lot of Christians have and, and do, yeah. you know, do that already yeah. in, a, in a variety of different ways. No, no different than some of the other things. Yeah. It's, it's interesting in, in the way that this is like inducing panic and that like you can't find a dust mask. Uh, you can't buy hand sanitizer right now. And, uh, you know, economy, all, all kinds of stuff are, uh, are happening and people are – every time I open my news app, there hasn't been a day the past two weeks that I've opened my news app that that wasn't one of the headlines. So what kind of counsel do we give to people who, you know, what – what the media wants us to do, not, I don't, I don't mean to make it sound nefar nefarious, but, but what it's driving us to do is to panic. So what, how, how is a Christian supposed to see something negative that's in our world yet think about the future? Well, I, one thing I would say, I agree with you. I, I think that we live in a, uh, in a kind of media driven culture in the sense that what, whatever makes a great story and is hot doesn't matter what it is. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing that's going to get attention because that sells, you know, and that makes the consumer, you know, the, the process continue to move on. And, yeah. you know, newspapers or websites or whatever, it helps you to be able to, to gain. And, I, I, and that, that, that's probably not a healthy, you know, type of a thing to do. Um, particularly in, in an environment like ours is where there's a great, polarizing that's one of the ways in which media seems to work 
always continually showing the polarization between different positions on something, yeah. not really addressing the issue right. oftentimes, but just in, just hyping the polarization. So and so said this, and, oh, and then these guys turned around and said that, you know, and oh, and then so and so apologized for, well, and then they turn around, <laughs> and, you know, you think, okay, someone uh, apologized? Did that? Yeah, I know that. Didn't <laughs> um, but you know that that sort of thing, it doesn't really help you address mm. the the issue that's going on. So maybe that kind of hype and that kind of focus uh, distracts you from actually doing something that might be valuable. Yeah, you know, in a, in a particular situation. It, it seems like the certainly the hype is an issue, but to ignore the hype isn't necessarily wise. And the reason I say that is because hype can create its own drama right well and, it is and and so in that sense just wisdom would say that you have to pay attention to what's going on not just be like oh i'm not going to i trust god right. um i mean trusting god sometimes also means taking care of things and yeah. and certainly you know looks at this exact moment like there's going to at least be some economic downturns because of it uh there will be some uh potential shortages of some things um, maybe some quarantines that, that, that might come about. And whether those are all justified or not is almost secondary to the fact that, that it looks like those things are, are possible. So, yeah. so it's wise to just say, okay, how do, I, how do I prepare for that? Am I prepared to share, um, you know, care for some others in the midst of it uh, and all of that? And, and certainly, I think as a Christian, one of the things that you know, from what I've heard, and obviously it's a developing story, so this could be totally wrong, but, you know, it's basically the flu uh, with a higher incident of death uh, per incident of infection. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there is some fear to that, especially people who have issues. Um, I listened to one podcast, it's a podcast called Today Explained, and they had a guy who was actually on that Diamond Princess who got coronavirus. Mm who was infected and he told the story and of his infection. He said, I basically had a fever for 24 hours and then it was like having a head cold and I was done in two weeks. And that was my experience of having the scary coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but right now that's the, you know, because of the fear of death and some of those things, there's maybe a greater concern about where that goes. And so, um, you know, again, I, I, I think my point is just to say it's not un, untrusting to say how do i take some steps to be prepared for people's response yeah. well at the same time saying if i'm a truly a person of faith then even a higher incident of death shouldn't be my primary fear because i yeah. wasn't created just for this world well not being stupid and you know saying bring it on kind yeah. of a thing yeah right. there are certain people that are more prone to i mean people who have compromised immune systems of some kind yep. which like or if you're older mm-hmm what are you looking at me for? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're old or, you know, you again, apparently not that, uh, not that abundant among little uh, children, for instance, right. unless they, again, unless they have some kind of immune problem or, I'm sorry. Uh, and the same sort of thing. If you've been sick and you're, mm -hmm. you get this in addition to being sick with something else, maybe a problem, you know? Yeah. So y y again, y you begin to ask, okay, well, what are the wise steps to take? Right. Okay. So what do you think? Some of the wise steps, you got any ideas? The wise steps? Yeah. What do you do? Um, I think this, this comes from somebody who f doesn't feel, um, let me put it this way. I, I think that we've had an unprecedented period of, of <laughs> peace and success in America. We've and been we've war, had, you know, for the last 16 years. <laughs> but I don't even know about that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I mean, think that, like, for the past 70 years, we haven't had, um, since World War II, we haven't had a, a truly uh, significant period of our history that has felt like it hasn't been peaceful. Like, there's been these, certainly September 11th was, was significant, but for the most part, we've experienced a lot of peace and, and prosperity as a country. Um, and I think that sometimes we take that for granted and assume that it's going to continue like that forever. So there is this part of me that thinks um, America's not going to last forever. Uh, something's going to happen that's going to change everything. So so there's that part of me. Um, and so personally, uh, I... Dude, so you're an optimist. Uh, yeah. Wow. I, well, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Uh, 
<laughs> so I think when it comes to like preparedness, like I do take seriously the fact that uh, FEMA and the CDC and lots of other people tell us that we should have two weeks of food on hand. Um, we should have water on hand. Uh, we should have ways to filter water. Um, and that sort of, I, so, so I take that seriously. Um, I'm not like a crazy person that has like a year's worth of canned food in my basement. However, I do want to say that I think, and this is why I asked the question about media is that I think the story is a pessimistic story, but Christians have an optimistic outlook on the world. And so regardless of what happens in this world, I think that we need to continue to be optimistic about the future. Um, even if catastrophe may, catastrophe may lie in the future, just knowing that God works through that and he does his good in the midst of that. Well, let's talk about a couple of particulars just, uh, related to the church. Yeah. Like, so for instance, uh, one of the things that seems to enhance the the uh, spread is when people are confined together. Yeah. Come together. Do you <laughs> right. think people should say, "I need to take a month or two off going to church"? I think after all, we do. You know, we get confined together. We're sitting right next to each other. You know, and such. Yeah, I know. And you're around all those students all the time. I know. He could have had this 14 days ago. Well, hey, uh, they schools have closed. Right. They have suspended school because again, they don't and. <laughs> and here's the thing, even though kids are uh, less likely to receive this, mm. kids are much better transfers of every disease there is. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. You know, because of the way they act and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So. I mean, I think we don't treat, treat it any different than we think about schools. And, and I mean, you know, we're, uh, you know, a couple miles from a school where, you know, a couple thousand kids are sitting in, in classrooms all together all day long. Um, and so I don't think that church is uh, in a Does the different church have the responsibility to let the people in the church know that there are people who are members of the church that are infected? What do you think? Oh, jeez. I, I would think if somebody's infected, they should stay home and um, at this exact moment. And probably, yeah, we should probably say, yeah, if, if it, somebody has been here and been infected, we should probably let people know that so that there's uh And we would do that clarity. in Kidsburg anytime something like pink eye or right. lice we or something like that We already do that, that for things up. like that. Yeah, do you think that would affect church attendance? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I would guess that you're going to see church attendance take a hit, uh, just like I think you're going to see uh, attendance at Pirates games take a hit. That's yeah. another reason, um, I think, you're going to uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's other reasons for the pirate attendance Bill drop. Bill Madlock is no longer a But uh, that's right. Um, the, but I think to shut down unless there's a, a compelling, unique reason, doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe if the schools all shut down in the area, that's another another level to think about. Yeah. Um, but obviously, people need to make their own choices about whether or not they think that's safe. I the only thing I would say is be careful of using it as a reason not to go if you're doing everything else that you otherwise do. Right, and me, church is the one thing that you decide isn't safe. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, that's uh, for you. Yeah. yeah. And what about this? Though? Do you think the Do you think the church has a responsibility to tell people from up front, you, you know, telling them, here's how you ought to participate in church given the particular health issue that we're dealing hmm. with? So what, what do you think that would be? Well, like, for instance, you know, it, it, we say, hey, on the way in here, you know, we we have containers of hand things. We, we encourage everyone to go by to, you know, because we realize that's a, one of the ways in which this is transferred is from your hands. And, you know, we, we encourage you not to, if you see people, you know, fist bump instead yeah, of do, uh, the, yeah, yeah. elbow or fit rather than shaking hands and, you know, getting close to and hugging people. You know, maybe you want to leave off the, the yeah. brotherly kiss for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we right. should bring Lay that back. Especially no tongue. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. But uh, I don't think that's yeah. part well, of Yeah, well, certainly I think, again, people mm. will start self-selecting into that. I think there's some You don't think there's responsibility of the church to, to explain To tell people to how to shake hands or not shake hands? I don't. I usually feel like that's over the top. You, you know, one of the things we will do is we certainly have online options, uh, which generally I think – can be a cop out, but there are times when if you're legitimately sick or concerned yeah. about something, it's a really good thing to yeah. uh, to have. And so we have several good uh, opportunities for people. Yeah, now that's to, one of the things not every church has, correct? Which is a great thing, you know. In other words, you, if you if you went to pandemic level where there was all kind of disruption of the culture in terms of and people needed to stay away from other people. Having the having all the kind of media oriented right. stuff that we have, I think is really right. A, we'd be able to stay connected via the media stuff right. that we have, 
as a church, which would be helpful to us. But you're right, yeah. a lot of churches don't have that yeah, it's, option. It's not the same as being with each other or no. seeing each other and, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But it's still, hey, uh, I got another question. Either one of you. What do you think about uh, another practice of the church about communion? Joel, what's your thought? Yeah, I think, uh, well, obviously we want to keep doing communion. We don't share a cup like some traditions do. No, we um, stick our hand in. The I know. And bowl. so so we're, we're talking through all that and uh, <laughs> just to make sure that at least in this season that that's as sanitary as possible. Um, <laughs> as opposed and, to other seasons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's no, not, I, I know what you mean. I'm yeah. Just yeah. Um, this Sunday in the strip, we're using uh, we're using cups instead of all sharing the, the thing that we're dipping in. Um, and we're just trying to experiment and see how can we make that feel as clean as possible. And we've done and, that and we other were, way here. Too. Yeah, we've and, done it both with cups and with. And we were scheduled to do it this weekend and we just decided not to without making that a big thing. But just because of the concern, just yeah. to say, let's not create that that issue um you know we we certainly because our tradition we take it frequently we're not like a church that's once a month and then all of a sudden yeah. says oh we skipped it for months and kind because of thing. because the alcohol in hand stuff is what does a job on the germs to great do you think maybe we ought to go to alcohol oriented maybe uh, vodka. That's, uh, <laughs> vodka. <laughs> that would uh that would be a change of uh, uh, yeah. or brandy brandy uh, is distilled wine so there's some biblical precedence yeah, for that, right yeah i think so i will say that um <laughs> i the team that cleans the building here does an incredible yeah. job especially in kidsburg like sanitizing everything yeah. um and i know for the next few weeks like we're going to make a concerted effort in the strip to like the service is done we're going to walk around with you know, wipes, Clorox wipes and do every handle and uh, railway, uh, whatever those handrails. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, I, the, this is, here's my cynic coming out. Um, if, if this thing continues to emerge at the level it is, you're not going to be able to avoid some exposure unless right. you stay home from everything. I mean, you go to the store to buy food, yeah. you're going to be exposed. Um, you, you know, you go to an airport, get in a, you know, an Uber, you're going to be exposed. So, so at some level, um, that this thing's going to have to run its course. Right. Uh, and yes, strategic quarantines may help and, and all of that. But yeah, you know, Terry, we were thinking about this, uh, we actually are starting, a, for those of you who don't know, an auditorium project here where our auditorium is going to shut down, which is a fairly large room. And we're going to smaller rooms and holding multiple services. And for a long time, we've been very concerned that we wouldn't have enough space. So maybe this is all going to work out well <laughs> That's right. for us here at Orchard Hill in terms of uh, yeah. just the attendance dropping for a short season and, you know. Uh, some of those things. So, how about this? You think the church has a? Uh, th there are certain people who, uh, it, let me put it to you this way, you know, there was a uh, when the AIDS epidemic, you know, hit in, back in the eighties, the church was criticized pretty heavily for their lack of concern and love for people who found themselves in that situation. Um, and you could you could figure out who the community was that needed help, and that wasn't, and the church didn't move to ha to help those people mm -hmm. to a great degree. There are people in this sort of thing that again are highlighted. I, I think of of elderly people who live in apartment complexes, for instance. It seems to me, you know, especially one or in uh, you know retirement homes of various kinds. So you know where they eat their plan is they always eat meals together. Mm -hmm. They're in common facilities in a regular, and they're and they're old, and oftentimes many of them have have health issues. Uh, do you think the church has some obligation to start thinking of a new strategy to say, hey, we know who's who's at who's at risk here, and uh, we ought to we ought to figure out how to, how to you know address the issues they're dealing with? I think if we felt like we could do that in a unique or not, not even unique in a excellent way, then yeah, maybe. Um, I feel like there are so many, uh, so many, uh, services and other entities that can do that better than us and, uh, and do it with excellence. I, so I think what, you know, what we can do is we can care for those people and, and love them and surround them with community and all that sort of thing. I think a church should at least look at its own members and say, how can we help? Like if there are some older people here right. who say going to the store might expose me to risk, 
can people in this church shop for them, help yeah. them? That would be a beautiful manifestation. Like I think, you, you know, my mom is uh, older, obviously, uh, older than me, <laughs> and, As mom, uh, but, uh, but fits into that demographic of people who you could say easily yeah. could be at, at risk. Uh, she lives in a facility not far from here, but, you know, it's UPMC run. Um, you know, I would hope that with what's paid to UPMC, they could think about how to contain um, the virus in their own facility right. in terms of maybe they have to think about that. Um, like, I don't know that the church needs to say we're responsible for every facility in the yeah, area. Right. But I think if we said, yeah, who are the people in the fellowship that are hurting? And certainly if there are other neighbors who say we can't get out because of this, you know, if the church could serve that, I think that'd be a, a great response. I, okay, I got big. What's your biggest concern with this? Yeah, with this. What's your biggest concern? I mean, I realize um, it's not a big deal right now, but fear driving a huge economic slowdown. Yeah, and uh, that that there will be, um, yeah, or legitimately the supply chain right. getting disrupted of products and goods that that could create, um, and you know, it's the kind of thing that could could spiral. Like, like I heard. The government talking about saying they wanted to um, force companies to pay people to be off. Well, a lot of companies don't have that kind of margin yeah, right. to all of a sudden say we can pay people to do no work. Yeah. Uh, so what companies will do instead is they'll fire or lay people off. That's right. And so you know that becomes a huge spiral, and it's just one thing leads to another. So that'd be yeah. my biggest okay. concern. What do you got? Uh, the end. That's it. What? That's it. We're out of time. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. I just want to say that I think. Yet. I think that uh, that Christians should be optimistic and remember that Jesus is on the throne and that this isn't the black death of the 1300s. And we've learned so much yeah. about sanitation <laughs> and, um, and, uh, uh, and, and so many other things. And, uh, and we're going to learn through this and grow and become better as a people. And uh, yeah, God is still good. Yeah. So. Thanks for tuning in to Ask a Pastor. Send your questions to askapastor at orchardhillchurch.com. And uh, thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Terry. Sure. Thank you. All right.